Okay, hello. Interpret multiplication as scaling. And we're going to do that by looking at two factors and then looking at the product that is the result of those two factors. Okay? So if we multiply a number times a number, we'll be able to interpret the product, interpret the answer, without doing any calculation. Let's look at some examples. Okay, so 10 times 1 half. Now, I know that 10 times 1 half is 5. Okay, so if I multiply 10, which is my first factor, times a factor that's less than 1, 1 half, then my product or my answer will be less than my first factor of 10. So I went from 10 times a factor of less than 1, and now my product is less than what I started with, which was 10. Okay? Let's look at this one. 10 times 2, I know that equals 20. If I multiply my first factor, 10, times a second factor that's greater than 1, then my product or my answer will be greater than that first factor. So 10 is what I started with. I multiplied it by something that's greater than 1. Then my product or my answer is greater than 10, which is 20. Okay? So the third thing we want to look at is if we multiply something by 1. So if we multiply 10, our first factor, times the second factor of 1, then we're going to end up with the same thing. It's going to be equal to what we started with. Okay? So let's look at some more examples. Okay, so I've got factor 1 is 1 half times factor 2 is 1 third. So what happens to my first factor, what happens to the 1 half when I multiply it times 1 third? Well, 1 third is less than 1, so my product is going to be less than what I started with. And again, I don't have to do this, I know that, but I can show you that that would be 1 sixth, and 1 sixth is less than 1 half. Okay? Alright, let's use that same first factor of 1 half. Let's multiply it by something greater than 1, which is 2. And when we do that, we get 2 over 2, and that's 1. So we went from 1 half to 1. So if we multiply something greater than 1, which was 2, we're going to be greater than what we started with, which is 1. We went from 1 half to 2 over 2, which is 1. And then again, the, the, this example, 1 half times 7 over 7. And I'm writing 7 over 7 because more than likely, when you have a question, they're not going to write the number 1. They're going to write a fractional form of 1. In this case, it's 7 over 7. 1 half times 7 over 7. When you multiply something by 1, it's going to be equal to what you started with. So that's going to equal 1 half. Okay? Now, these next ones we're going to do, we're not going to calculate them. We're just going to know what our answers will be. Okay, three-fifths times seven-eighths. Okay, I want to know what happens to three-fifths. Well, seven-eighths is less than one, so I'm going to have a product that is less than three-fifths. If I multiply three-fifths by something that is less than one, then my product will be less than what I started with, or less than the factor I'm looking at, and that's less than three-fifths. Fifteen times seven-sixths. How does that compare to fifteen? Well, seven-sixths is more than one, so my product will be greater than fifteen. And again, I'm not doing calculations. I just know this. If I know these three principles, then I know how to answer this question without doing calculations. Okay, one and a half times 9 over 9. 9 over 9 is 1, so 1 and a half times 9 over 9, or 1, or 1 and a half times 1, will be equal to what I started with. My first factor will be equal to 1 and a half. Okay, now notice here the question has been turned, and we're not asking about the first factor, now we're asking about the second factor. So be careful and really look at which factor you're being asked about. So in this case, 4 7th times 7 5th, the question is, what happens to 7 over 5? Well, 4 over 7 is less than 1, so my product will be less than 
7 over 5. Okay, let's look at these. 7 sixteenths times 3 and 3 fourths. All these we're going to be comparing the factor, looking at the factor 7 sixteenths and what happens to it. So 7 sixteenths times 3 and 3 fourths. Well, 3 and 3 fourths is greater than 1. So 7 and 16 times 3 and 3 fourths would go over here. 7 16 times 3 and 3 fourths. Okay. Let's look at this one. 7 16 times 3 sevenths. 3 sevenths is less than 1. So it's going to be, our product will be less than what we started with. So 7 16 times 3 sevenths goes here. Okay. 7 16 times 4, well, 4 is greater than 1, so 7 16 times 4, my product will be greater than 7 16 Here, 2 and 1 eighths times 7 16 they're switched around, but it's still, my product will be greater than 7 16 so 2 and 1 eighths times 7 16 goes here, product will be greater than 7 16 7 16 times 3 over 3. Well, 3 over 3 is 1, so anything times 1 is itself. So 7 16 will be equal. It will equal 7 16. It will be the same. All right, 1 times 7 16. Well, that's going to be the same thing also. 7 16 times 1. My product will be the same. Okay? Okay, in this example we're looking at m, and we want to know what happens to m when we multiply it by 5 eighths. So 5 eighths is less than 1, so our product will be less than m. Okay? Uh, let's look at this one. n, the variable n, times 1 and a half, 1 and 1 fifth. Well, 1 and 1 fifth is greater than 1, so our product will be greater our product will be greater than n. In this last example, we have the variable s times 2 over 2, which is 1. So our product will be simply s. It will be equal to s or our product will be s. Anything times 1 is itself. All right, let's look at some more. Okay, three-fifths times seven-thirds. What do I know about the product without doing calculations? Well, I know that the product will be greater than three-fifths because seven-thirds is greater than one. The product will be less than three-seven-thirds because three-fifths is less than one, okay? Let's look at this one. One and a half times four thirds. I know the product will be greater than one and a half because four thirds is greater than one. I know the product will be greater than four thirds because one and a half is greater than one. Okay, so four thirds times something greater than one will be greater than four thirds. One half times something greater than one will be greater than one one half. Let's look at this one. I know the product will be less than three fifths because seven eighths is less than one. Three fifths times something less than one, the product will be less than three fifths. Okay. I also know that the product will be less than seven eighths because seven eighths times something less than one will be less than what we started with. The product will be less than 7 eighths. Okay. Okay, so if we summarize, we have factor 1 times factor 2 equals a product. So we've learned that if we multiply, if we're looking at factor 1, if we're zeroing in on factor 1, we multiply it by something less than 1, then our product will be less than, in this case, 5. If we multiply something by 1, then it's going to be equal to, again in this case, 5, because we started with 5. And if we multiply something greater than 1, multiply our factor by something greater than 1, then it's going to be greater than 5, what we started out with.
All right, hope this helps out. Thank you for watching.